this is a shot of a painting I did uh, of an old man. Um, I will show you my workflow when I try to work very loose. And um, this is how we start. I just take some um, some color and thin down with turpentine. I didn't measure anything out. I did everything just by observation. And this is how I like to work when I just work for myself. Here I'm working on the outside shape, try to find the outer shape of, of the head. Just very fluidly. As you see, I'm um, working very geometrical, like like I always do when I uh, when I work by observation. I I just try to find geometrical shapes. Here, just put a line um, to indicate where my eyes are and the right angle I want to I want to paint. And this is uh, important when you try to to find a likeness in your model. Uh, it's important not, not just to have the good measurements, and uh, but it's important with the eyes to to keep the right angle, and uh, and I like to start like that. I'm just trying to find the sh the shape of the nose. When I draw the eyes, I don't specifically just look at where the eye is placed. I try to find more or less the right distance and everything, and then I just paint a little bit around when I see it's it's a big mass of shadow. I'm constantly switching from one eye to the other. Try just to find some kind of generic distances, generic shapes and, and big masses of light and shadow. As you will see here during this painting, I'm I'm, I'm switching everywhere around. I don't I don't get stuck in in one section of the painting for too long, not even here in the drawing. Uh, I started with the left shape of the head, then I switched to the eye, then I did a little bit of the nose, but I don't stuck in, in one part for too long. And this you will see during the whole process here in this painting. And I think this is one of the important aspects when I want to explain you how to work very loosely. And, and this is a part of it. Because staying too much in, in one place, in, in one area of the painting will, first of all, it will keep your attention just to that section. And, and this is not what we want. We want to switch around, we want to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and, and, and develop the painting like this. And this is a part of, of painting freely and, and, and very loose. As you see here, I'm, I'm not drawing one single eye, I just painted it some big shadows. And, and there are some some eyebrows, there is the eye, there is the pupil, there is everything in it, but it will come later on. I just try to place some some big shadow parts, it's big shapes. Maybe you'll ask yourself why I paint again a man with beard. I did a couple of these in the last few days. 
I, I try to think about why I actually pick up models with big facial hair and, and beards. I think one reason is because I, I really don't like to, to paint them out. I, I don't know why. I have some kind of problems with that. Not that I, I can't paint them, but I simply just don't like to paint them. Uh, I heard from people they don't like to paint hands. Uh, some don't like to paint ears. In my case, it's the mouth. I, I don't like it. Oftentimes when I, when I do portraits, I, I finish everything around it and, and then I, I look at the mouth and I didn't touch it one time and then I, most of the times I paint it at last. I think it's just because I, I don't like to paint it. It's annoying. Everyone is different. So here I have uh, some kind of generic head, N not generic, I try to be precise with my drawing as, as much as I can, with just only observation. But, but this is one of those paintings where I really try to stay loose because the end result, I want it to be like this. I don't want a, a really high realistic portrait in this case. I want a portrait that looks painterly, that where you can see the work motion that I, that I put into. And this is what I try to achieve here. Sometimes you, you really have to, to want to work like that. In my case, uh, I know myself and I know when I don't go with that precise decision to do it like this, I oftentimes I, I just get too, too detailed and, and I, my workflow is completely different and maybe the whole painting afterwards is going to look much more tight, but you lose that painterly aspect a little bit. And I wanted to keep it till the end in this painting right here. Uh, so here I'm working on the, on the darker darks. As you saw before, I just put some kind of, of of shadows with with the same drawing color and and here i'm putting in some some darker areas everywhere where i can see it's a little bit darker especially around the eyes here i already try to define a little bit more where the eyes is placed where i want everything to be and but but still, it's it's nothing, nothing finished. Uh, it's just a placement, and afterwards, if if I like it, I keep it, or I draw over it, I paint over it. But in this portrait, I didn't move that much. I I was I was pretty happy with what I did. Here my color is still pretty thinned down. I just try to, to fill some, fill up the areas that, that are white, but uh, you see it's, it's nothing very special. I just throw some dark color in it. Sometimes when I paint and I want this kind of results, I say to myself that I, I have a time limit to do that, but not, not watching at, uh, at the clock the whole time, but just simply 
don't think too much, work really, really fast, uh, fast in, in, in a kind of fashion that just to, to let the paintbrush and my hand do the works and, and not too much my head. Uh, I, I throw it in, I don't think too much. And sometimes it turns out really good. Here I add some kind of reddish color, some darker half tones that indicate where the change of planes is going to be from the light to the shadow. And as you see my my painting, um, my model is a kind of older man. In the first stages of the painting, if you're happy with your drawing, it's important to fill up the canvas as fast as you can. Just try to keep your, your drawing correct, the shapes, correct something if needed. You have all the time in the world to do that during the painting. Here it's still some dark half tones, but as you see there are already one value lighter than the one we applied before. This is also important um, to indicate uh, the change of planes that you, you try to describe with your painting. Still using the same brush I used for, for my drawing. It's a natural bristle brush. And those are actually pretty good if you try to work this way because they're a little bit harder than, than some synthetic um, hair brushes. But they grab a lot of paint and um, you can work more freely with them, um, even faster, I would say. Later on in the painting, through, through the end, when I just try to soften out some, some little things, especially in the cheek where I want a little bit of softness in it, I will use a synthetic brush. When you try to paint a little bit loose, uh, as you see here sometimes I, I work with only one brush stroke. I put it in and I let it there. And later on you will see it because if you if you make one mark and then you go over it and again and you try to soften it, you, you don't you don't see the brush stroke anymore. Here we really want to see it, we, we want to keep it. Load up your brush, take the right color, place it on and if 
you can do it with only one brush stroke, then do it like this. If you need two, then make two, but try to not make too many. You see here we are developing some some lighter half tones. We're still far away from any highlight, but this is just a foundation uh, for the highlights that we are going to to place over it later on. But as you see, we are getting lighter and lighter, and we already have established almost the whole face. As you see me doing here, make one brush stroke, maybe two. I try not to to make more. It's just an indication, and later on it will be. I will look okay. I'm just filling up some of the beard with some kind of generic color. Pick up the darkest you, you see in, in that area and, and just place it. When, when you try to paint hair, it's uh, uh, this is also something I, I say over and over again, but hair is, those, uh, is one of those surfaces that First of all, they're soft, they have a lot of texture in it. And oftentimes it's uh, not the best idea to, to paint single hairs. Um, depends on the results you want, but in realism it's, um, in my opinion, completely unnecessary to, to paint single hairs. You can make an indication I'm not talking about what I'm doing here. What I do here is very rough and very direct and this is the kind of results I wanted for this painting. But in general, also if it would be a painting that is a little bit tighter than this, you don't want to paint single hairs. Uh, it's not necessary. Try to, to mimic the texture of the hair and, and later on you, you can add something that indicates uh, single hairs. But don't do it all over the place. It's, uh, in most cases it will look bad, in my opinion. You see me doing here, I'm, I'm just filling in some, some grays, there's a little bit of green in it. I'm, I'm using the Zorn palette, by the way, for this portrait, as I do often for, for flash tones. And with the ivory black and some, some yellow ochre, you, you can get very beautiful greens. Here I'm filling up some background. Here in the outside shape I try to be a little bit more precise because I want to keep the drawing in that area. But as you see it's still pretty soft and um, 
not too sharp. It's important to throw in some, some background. You're going to see the whole painting in, in a whole other aspect as, as before, in a whole new environment instead of just on a white canvas or in this case on a, on a gessoed paper with a little bit of tint in it. But as soon as I throw in some background, you, you will see the whole figure in, in a whole new atmosphere. In the atmosphere it belongs, and, and from there you, you can take better decisions and continue to work better. Here take a look, close look at my reference and, and when I'm happy what I what I did before with that kind of dark color. Okay, I say I like to the pupils to be there and, and I place them in. Putting in some more darker half tones that I missed before. Not that I missed them, but I, I waited until now to to place them in, and and now from the beginning stages where I just was really rough and and I throw just color on it just to fill it up, and now still with a big brush, of course, but um. As you see, I'm working a, a little bit slower now. Observate your model. Just look what is missing.
Here I'm adding some lighter values um, on the beard. Just a few accents. Um, Try to keep my shapes. What this I'm working on is, is um, simply values. It's no single hairs. It's it's nothing like that. Just indicating some lighter areas where the light is hitting the model. As you see me doing here, um, I'm, I'm using the brush in, in all kinds of directions. I, I twist it, I, uh, I use it to push sometimes, I, I pull it, I, I make a horizontal brush stroke, then I make a vertical again. Uh, I constantly um, turn it around and, and try to, to use it in as many ways as I can just just to keep that kind of abstraction and uh, looseness that I want to achieve with this. I'm used to use um, pretty large brushes. Pretty large is not always the case, but um, long brushes and you want to to take them from the end of the handle and uh, try to try to work not too close on the canvas you, you gotta have the whole picture in front of you and not just the little area you're just working on and sometimes it's it's the wrong focus if you're too close to the canvas you don't see the whole image and sometimes it's um, it's important to to step a little bit away. I don't say you know always just step back a few a few steps and and look at your painting. Of course you have to do that as well. I I suggest you to do it. But um, even while you're working on it, try to to keep a little bit of distance from your painting, and you're gonna have a better view on it. What I'm also doing a lot here in this painting is um, I mix some colors directly on on the surface, on the canvas. This is not a canvas, by the way, just a paper. Uh, but um, as you see, I I actually had a a dark color on my brush, and then I worked a little bit on the beard, and now it's it has a light gray on it so I don't suggest to do that all the time um, gotta have a little bit of experience for that but um, sometimes it's wor it works and uh, but you have to be a little bit careful if you if you overdo it um, you're gonna have a painting that's actually has a lot of dirty colors in that and not really a clear color combination they're just gonna mud into each other all together and it's actually not what you want
Here with a little bit uh, smaller brush, I'm still working on some transitions, some half tones. And I didn't put one highlight yet. Um, you, you want to keep your highlights um, pretty much to the end. Uh, work as, as much as you can on the general colors and on the important values. And once you have that, put the highlights in. But try to save it to the end. I'm working on smaller and smaller shapes, make little adjustments. You put in other transition colors between the dark of the cheek there and the part where it gets lighter. I didn't mix the two colors together, I just put a color in between. I always say work from dark to light and uh, of course it is right and I did it with this painting too but once you have done that and once you have covered all your canvas you want to adjust some things some parts needs to be a little bit darker than before and some others they, they're just lighter but you can always come back and and uh, work on, on some parts again even if if they're not dark enough, then you have to darken them up. But that's the importance um, to cover all your canvas first and move on from there. Make adjustments. Then, once, once you've covered everything. There will always be something to, to adjust in, in a painting. You're gonna make mistakes and after that you, you have to go and fix them. What you see me doing here, I actually don't do that often. I usually don't do these lines afterwards. Um, usually when I'm working on older people, I, I use the foundation color, the, the darkest color on the forehead to, to make those marks and, and let them appear just by adding some lighter color on top and the highlights afterwards but I realized uh, they weren't that defined as I wanted to so I, I took a smaller brush and I painted them in but afterwards I will go 
in again with a lighter color with a lighter value and soften them up and make them look as I want. As I mentioned before, you, you see me moving through the whole painting. Um, a few seconds ago, uh, I, I worked on the eyes, now I go back to the nose, um, then I go back to the other eye, then I paint a little bit of the beard, uh, then I work on the ear. I, I move around all the time. I, I don't get stuck in one place for too long. Of course the eyes is a, is a crucial focal point in every portrait and they're going to get more attention from the viewer and from me as well while I paint them because I want to, to be the focal point and I want the viewer to look at the eyes. working on some smaller and smaller shapes, some little reflections around the eyes. Moving to the nose again and then up to the forehead. Constantly adjusting Here you saw me making this transition and I I repainted it over. And as you see you, you don't need that much softness to to indicate a change of the plane. When you don't see me working on a painting, then I'm probably because I'm just mixing up some colors, changing brushes, clean them up, depends.
As you see, I, I put a lot of attention in the eyes. Uh, and here I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit tighter. But it's just to indicate some, some smaller shapes. And um, to work on, on, on little things that are important for the overall look. Here making the, the shadow side of the eye a little bit darker. The white of the eye is never white. It depends on what's the face surrounding, it depends on the light. Take a closer look, they're always a little bit grayish, sometimes a little bit bluish. Sometimes they're just the same color as the skin, but just a little bit lighter. But they're actually never really white. Even sometimes when I put some reflections on the eyes, I almost never use pure white. I always tint it a little bit. Because even the light of, of the reflection, which is in the most cases the lightest part of, of the whole painting, um, they always have a color. And that color depends on, on what surrounds the subject matter. Now I put in some highlights. This is like almost the lightest highlights I would put on now. But as you see, I, I waited until now to, to put them in because I wanted everything else to, to work before I actually apply that. And as you see, even the highlights on the face are really far away from white. If you try to achieve a realistic color of the skin, try to avoid any kind of black and any kind of white. But this goes not just, this is not just for portraits, it's in, it doesn't matter what you paint. But especially on skin tones, um, try to, to keep your values from really dark browns and reds and greens to very light colors but never pure white. I don't know if you can see it here on the video but um, this is actually really far away from white. It's white with um, some vermilion 
some yellow ochre and even a little touch of black as well. I'm trying to make um, the outside shape of the beard a little bit softer. Still just indications of lights, it's no single hair. more little reflections around the eye What I'm adding now is uh, basically really what I observe. You, see, you saw me just putting in this reflection in the eye. This is actually not white at all. It's a little bit of white with a lot of black in it. But against this dark uh, pupil, it appears light enough to, to appear realistic. What I'm doing here is really try to observe very closely and, and what I'm adding in now it's it's really nothing casual at all anymore. Now I have established everything I want and this, now it's just to observe really closely and just add those things that are important without getting too detailed This is just some indication of, of, of hair. You try to, to create that kind of texture that when you, when you step away from the painting, it, it all makes sense. When you would go close, it's, it's just a brush stroke.
now we're coming to towards the end just adding some more background filling up some some areas I'm adjusting some final highlights. And still, it's not white. I try also to, to soften out these this lines that I painted in before. So that they actually look more like skin and not some kind of lines I I painted in. And here, as I mentioned before, I'm, I will go in and soften some little parts that I want to be softer. And that's uh, especially the cheek, around the cheek there is some still pretty hard plain changes uh, and I want to make them a little bit softer. But still try to, don't go in and, and try to soft everything out. We, we want to keep a lot of texture in it. We, we just want to soften some parts that are important for a good realism, but you, you don't want to blend everything together. Only make it a little bit softer where it really needs to. Leave everything else as it is. And when you soften something out, just try to take a, a very soft brush, a, a soft clean brush, and soften the edge that you want to soften and then clean up your brush again.
just with a paper towel. Wipe it off. Because every time you, you try to to soften an edge, you, you're gonna pick up some color. And then when you go and want to soften another one, you're, you're going to dirt it up. I hope you liked this video so far. If you want to see what I'm painting, you can follow me on Instagram at uh, Diego Manigrasso. You can also follow me on uh, my Facebook page. It's Diego Manigrasso Fine Art. And I would appreciate if you go and check out my, my website at www.diegomanigrasso.com. There you can see some of my works. If you have any questions, just leave them in the, in the comments below. I will answer them as soon as I can. This was a very loose painting and um, here I'm signing it with the back of my brush and I think this was my last brush strokes. And here is the uh, shot of the finished painting again. I hope you liked it. Take care guys and see you soon.